goes in and out. Uh, we just wanted to be in the gaps. We wanted to put pressure on the ball. Uh, you know, stay down on fakes. Try to make them score over us. You know, they, you know, our, our our guys executed the game plan to perfection from the defensive end of the floor. There's no question about that. How easy was it to break down their zone on the perimeter? It seemed like you get one or two shots or one or two passes, and you have a wide open look. Well, there's a variety of things you can run against zone, and, and we do seven or eight different things. Uh, but the, the reality is, it's not the X's and the O's. It's not, it's not the what. It's the who. We got guys that are experienced that can make plays and recognize throwback, bring it off the ball screen, hit the high post, go high low, skip it to the weak side, move it side to side. Puts a lot of pressure on the zone defense. Yeah, that's what experience does. You know, we have an experienced team, and we played that way. You know, and you know Steve's got an inexperienced team, but a talented team, a team that's going to be really good. He's going to have them ready, but uh, early in the season, you know, experience is a great advantage. You, uh, there's been, you know, you talked about being a better perimeter shooting team, and tonight was a pretty good indication of that. You have a lot of guys who can. Who can well, you know, things. you're right, Rick. I mean, it's great to see Dom Ewell knocking them down. You know, Pete. You know, Pete. You know, Jared. Uh, you know, Clemens is solid, and then you know, you just keep going with Dale, with Brady. I mean, you know, we got a lot of a variety of guys. Uh, when, when Steve first went zone, we had more of a driving team in there. We subbed some guys in that really could spread the floor and uh, did a really good job moving the ball against it. Mike Gazell just uh, continues to, to play his best basketball. Yeah. Uh, what, what pleases you the most about his game? He just quietly... His decision his... making. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's mixing up his penetration, his pull-up jumper, his three. Uh, you know, he's pushing it on the break. He's seeing the floor. Uh, and it, essentially, he's not making mistakes. If you have a point guard that doesn't make mistakes, it gives you a chance to score. Every time you come down, it gives you a chance to win. Woodbury was really solid, especially in the first half. I think he had eight eight points, four boards, a couple uh, assists, a couple steals, no turns. He was phenomenal, and, and, and you need a big, strong body. Fish was a handful, shooting 70% from the field. You know, he was working to post, to ride Woody up the lane. Woody's a hard guy to do that to. And, and he did a great job of keeping his hands where the referees could see him and, and, and not pick up any fouls. Uh, I would have gone back to him, but... You know, he's got a little bit of a bum, bum ankle, so I didn't put him back in down stretch. Twice in the first half, Coach, you had one starter and four bench guys in there. Once it was uh, Clemens, once it was Mike. How valuable is that going to be down the stretch, playing on a road venue in, in a game, you know? Well, the, the only way you can survive a college basketball season is to have depth. You, know, you can't do it with six or seven guys. I mean, I've been in this too long. So we're really slowly trying to develop who are going to be six, seven, eight, nine in particular. But in our case, you know, we're really playing 12, which is rare for me, and it's, it's hard to do. But, you know, different situations present themselves where we can play different people. And they're all at a size length. You know, you play Bear at the guard with a forward position. He's six seven. you know. Uh, Christian Williams is six six with a six eleven wingspan. So you can play him at the forward position, the guard position, or the point. So I, I can do that and still be able to take care of the basketball and have guys understand what they're doing. And your length, uh, you <coughs> seem to be much better this year getting out on the perimeter, around the three-point shot, and contesting every shot, but yet getting in and help defense. You guys are very active both inside. Yeah, our, our help side defense, you're absolutely right, it was, was tremendous. And it has to be because if you hug, you know, they'll lob it over to Fisher. Henry's got more space to drive it. Dwayne Wilson's got more space to drive it. And you've got to keep those people in and keep them out and be able to contest. That's what we did. Did you sense while Marquette was on offense in the first half that they didn't really want to test your bigs? It seemed like they were adverse to really going in the paint much. I, I did not. Uh, I, I thought I thought Jared Utah is, is, is a tough matchup for Henry. Uh, you know, it's Henry's third college game, and he's going against a fifth-year senior who's every bit as long and is used to guarding people off the dribble. A lot of four men he's going to go up against won't be able to handle them off the dribble. Jared can, but we got in and you know when Henry would drive and spin, we were right in his right in his wheelhouse and and Woodbury pretty much handled Fisher by himself, which most of the time you need help. But they will run some action that that sort of isolates Fisher and our weak side guys were where they were supposed to be. If you chase out to the corner, they'll lob it over the top, and we stayed in there and, and they couldn't throw it in. And then by the time they swung it, we were okay. 
your ball movement was really good in, in the game. I mean, it, it seemed to be pretty locked in. Assists. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what you want. I think that's probably our greatest strength as a team. We share the ball, we move the ball. You know, six guys in doubles. I mean, you know, nobody cares who the leading scorer is. And uh, that's a good feeling as a coach. Okay. And